Created in the wake of the deadly school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, the State Firearms Task Force is recommending Rhode Island follow what most other states already do when it comes to preventing violent crimes with firearms. Iowa Stu supporter Jared Pliner is live now in Providence with more details on the task force findings and what it means for you. Mike, both members of this task force who have been at work since late last year and those on the outside called these recommendations very narrow, very specific, and that this 20-member panel had to walk a very fine line. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. With that unanimous acceptance of the task force's report, since October, its members examined links between mental health, substance abuse, and gun violence, weighed gun rights against public safety, multiple voices getting a chance to speak. We've had gun owners on the, on the task force, and so they, their voices were heard here, as well as mental health advocates. We, we had everyone represented that has um, an interest uh, in this issue. The result, a bill ordering the reporting of Rhode Islanders with mental health issues deemed criminally dangerous by a judge to the federal background check system. Only those forcibly committed, not those voluntarily seeking treatment. The idea that anyone who is mentally ill is violent was not supported. So I was pleased that we were able to uh, have a meaningful discussion on those issues. Gun rights advocate and candidate for state rep Ed Doyle says the task force did what it should have while protecting people's rights. Those with mental illness that has caused criminal action in the past, whether it be having a firearm or any opportunity to create mayhem, you want to be able to stop that. And the bill tied to this report currently being drafted should be introduced shortly. If it's passed, the state would have to share uh, names and dates of birth, uh, general descriptive information, not patient records. Those would not have to be disclosed. There would also be an avenue for appeals and a board that could take a look and reclassify if somebody deserves to regain access to firearms. Live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom tonight, I'm Jared Pleiter, Eyewitness News.